About seven years ago, the day after my 50th birthday, I got the best birthday present imaginable. I climbed onto a Russian Soyuz rocket, and I launched to the International Space Station for a six-month mission. It was the best birthday present ever, and it has been actually very hard to do any better, especially for the husband. <laughs> That's not a journey that you go on by yourself. This is our crew, and we went to the space station in the Russian Soyuz. It's a, it's a capsule that is smaller than any car here on Earth. And there's three of us there, and it's uh, kind of the you know, astronaut version of an American, an Italian, and a Russian all went to a bar. <laughs> except that we're in a spacecraft. <laughs> and and this, is a, this is a picture here of our crew really excited about going to space. <laughs> and when we got there, there were three people already on the space station. So this is the other Soyuz crew. And they're already there. And this is the six of us, a picture, all excited about going to space. <laughs> and I say this not to make fun of my teammate, Dmitry Kondratev, who I, th I think we all know who I'm talking about, right? <laughs> but I say this in a serious way because it's a very common myth that when they are putting space crews together, there's a lot of attention and detail towards personalities and how people are on this team or that team and, and how I've never actually seen any evidence of that process. And it doesn't mean that I'm, I'm not complaining about the people that I go with, but actually the mission is more important than whether you know, we're people who were already friends. And, and because the mission is so paramount, we put the, those crews together based on skill. And my job on, I mean, in, in this picture that you see here, one of the things that I discovered was that this is actually a picture of Dmitry Kadratyev excited about going to space. <laughs> And it was something that I needed to learn. I mean, I don't see him just in this picture, but I see him you know, every day, and we're talking and training, and, and he's giving me that look. <laughs> and and I, need to re I need to change my point of view and be open to the fact that, you know, as a cultural thing, this is not the face that says, I don't care about what you said, and I wish you would stop. This, it's just, a, it's a cultural thing, and it's because it's about the mission. So I'd like to share that mission with you and help you understand how we, as astronauts and cosmonauts, have been flying for uh, 18 years, 17 years, on a, on a space station together. So this is launching from Kazakhstan. It's a really proud moment for me. That's us in the spacecraft docking with the International Space Station. It takes us about two days. It's really, really beautiful to be in that little spacecraft. This is my favorite part of the movie, flying through the space station. <laughs> And we were the first crew to have uh, that robot up in space. I'm considered the mom of Robonaut. There's a lot of different really important tasks to do, and we're all trained to do all of them, but we're also people. And, and we have to sort of bring our own personalities, which can be pretty fun up there. And, and, the, and the environment itself is spectacular and amazing. And the view gives you a perspective in a lot of different dimensions. It is, looking out the window is something that never, ever gets old. This is Aurora Australis. We didn't see this every day. I saw it maybe 10 times, but it's... it's <laughs> well, I had to show you a picture, right? <laughs> but it's amazing. And, and, and just going over the Earth. I mean, this is the cities at night. Every yellow light there is a, is a city light, and every little white flash was a piece of... was, was lightning. And, and then getting to see the places that actually you come from. I mean, I'm an American with Irish-American heritage. So it's really amazing to, to see that view and to be on that kind of a mission. And, and the, what we're doing up there is, is things that just cannot be done down here on the ground. Finding out, you know, what do liquids really want to do? With gravity down here on the Earth, we, we can't really figure that out. Combustion, the same idea, where our, our candle flames up there burn differently and we're allowed to make measurements over 20 or 30 seconds that have to make, be made in just you know, so quickly down here on the ground. And so 
being up in space gives us an opportunity, a different lens, a different way to look at things and gain a better understanding. And it's important for space, this is growing plants in a place where it's hard to, it's hard to grow things. Uh, this is a, a little baby plant on one of those missions that I grew. And, and so we're growing plants in a place that's, that's hostile. Well, these are things that are important for space exploration to pave the road to Mars. And at the same time, they're important for sustainable Earth. And a lot of the things that we're finding out are experiments uh, about the human body, about ourselves, especially with respect to how our hearts work and also um, how our bones work in a microgravity environment. We lose bone 10 times faster than a woman who's 70 years old who has osteoporosis. And so the, the good news about that is that it's easier to measure for us, and so that helps us understand more about the process. And when we're able to understand more about what some of the remedies might be, I have some bad news for you. And that is, I don't know if it's bad news, but exercise, pretty much here to stay. <laughs> it, it really seems to make a difference, but those studies are ongoing, and I'm very proud to, to be a part of them. But I'd like to just share more about how that happens when you have six people. Now, if you look closely, you'll see this is a different set of six people, and Dimitri is still excited. Um, <laughs> But, but this is a different set of six people, and that is actually the challenge for us, um, is that we, uh, we don't get to pick these people. And this is when, when that first crew came down from the space station. So we went up, three people were there, three people come, three people go home, three more come. This is another group of six. It's a whole other group. I mean, I've, I've told my Dimitri story, but we are all having to really look at each other much more closely. And some of the tasks are so critical. Uh, Paolo and I were the second crew ever to capture a supply ship from the International Space Station. And it's, it, the supply ship that you see there in the picture, it weighs several tons, and it's the size of a large school bus. Now, when I see this picture, the phrase that comes to mind is that objects in the mirror may be closer than they appear. <laughs> it really does. <laughs> and when I see this, which is Paolo and I, in the cupola, which is about the size of our, our circle right here, it's a pretty small place. We practice for years, and or not, well, actually years uh, together. We, we practiced for years for this mission, and specifically many, many months on this particular task. And when I think of that time, and I see this picture, the word that comes to mind is lunch. Because Paolo's Italian, and Lunch is a part of the fabric of his day. I eat lunch in my car. I have a box of granola bars, and that is enough for me. And he'd be like, what? And, and he'd say, well, you know, we have to eat lunch. And actually, that is the place that we talked about how we were doing and what was going on with the training session we just did, what we're going to do tomorrow, how things are at home. That is where we're building our crew. So we're really, we're spending time getting to know each other. Somebody like Paolo, it's, it's actually pretty easy. I mean, you see it all right in this picture. He's right there, he's open, he's verbal. I mean, you know, we know it all. I, I'd like to think that I'm pretty easy as well, but you know, we do all have our special, you know, our special characteristics that somebody else ends up, you know, feels like those are strange or inconvenient. So we've all got those. And I feel like, you know, I'm maybe, maybe not, so, not so difficult. Scott and I are pretty different. Scott, the robot is the one on the left, <laughs> by the way. I mean, I make this joke because he seems kind of stern. He's a, he's a person of very few words. I'm a person of more. And we had to find our, our common ground. And it was interesting to both of us because we are so different. When he left the space station as part of that first crew that leaves, he looked at me, and I looked at him, and I said, you know, I'm going to miss you. And he said, I'm, I'm going to miss you, too. And, you know, when we got home, he was at the bottom of the ladder for Paolo and I when we got off the, the airplane after landing in Russia. And, and, uh, and he said, well, you know, I had to make sure that, you know, you got home okay. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's really special bonds. And, and my job was to figure out, you know, how do I find this guy in this picture? The guy who is tugging on a giant set of bungee cords and is forming a large catapult capable of sending anything across the space station or anyone. I mean, 
where is that guy? I had to figure out how to get to him. Al Drew came uh, with the space shuttle and did a spacewalk. And, you know, the reason we can have this picture, which is just the utter joy of that, you know, seven-hour spacewalk was done successfully. All of us contributed to that, and they came back inside. And, I mean, there is just not a better day's work to, to celebrate that with friends. And, and it's, this is actually one of my favorite, or it's my favorite picture that we've ever taken at NASA. I think it shows that crew camaraderie that then allows us to do critical tasks like using the Canadian robotic arm to maneuver uh, a several ton school bus sized supply ship around the space station. Some people, like Nicole Stott, Nicole came up with the shuttle as well, was there for about a week. And Nicole and I have been friends since the day we met. It's easy for us to find those places that we connect together. And, and yet, other people, it's not so easy, and we have to actually just think, how can I find this person? How can I see this person? It, whether I like them or not is actually immaterial. It's about w what are the places that we can find to really be together, so that at the times we have to be together, that we can make it work. And I think in, in looking to understand how to do that, um, I, I think looking in the past actually can give us some clues. This is a picture from the movie Hidden Figures, and this is Katherine Johnson in the middle. She was a mathematician that did the calculations for the trajectories for the Apollo, Mercury, and Gemini launches to get people up into orbit to the moon and back home, and she was the person in charge of doing that. And when John Glenn was launching on his first mission, he said it was when they first had computers that were doing these calculations and said, and he said, you know, I want that woman, the smart one, to check those calculations. In this movie, I think if everyone would watch this movie, we could actually change the world. Because look at this picture. I mean, in this picture, Catherine is a woman of color. She is wearing a dress of color, which she is actually in almost every scene of the movie. And she's surrounded, she's in a sea of white guys with white shirts and skinny black ties. What is hidden? about Katherine Johnson in this picture. Nothing. And yet we did not see her. And it wasn't that someone really tried or, you know, was, was, it, was, it was not on purpose. So it was not on purpose that someone didn't recognize her talents, but it takes looking harder. And so those are the kinds of things that we have to learn. In this picture, I'm very proud of this picture, but all of us are, because this is our crew meeting the president. And for all of us, I think when we were in third grade, no one knew that we were going to be in a picture like this when we were older. And so all of us need to be ready. All of us have to be able to be part of a team that makes a difference. And to do that, I think there's two interesting things that have to happen. I think you have to be brave, and I think you have to be open. Now, there's a slide here that shows me playing the flute. I'm not the best flute player in the whole world. I just love to play. And I pretty much knew that if I played my flute on the International Space Station, it would end up on the internet. So it took, it took actually a certain amount of bravery for me to play. It was very fun. One take, this, one take. <laughs> Music is all about playing together. This is Ian Anderson of Jethro Tull. I took his flute to space, along with the chieftains, and we made this duet. see this as a, as a prime example of somebody having to be brave and somebody having to be open. I had to be brave, Ian had to be open, and together we made something that's been meaningful to so many people. This was the first time this duet um, actually aired was on the 50th anniversary of human spaceflight. Ian Anderson was playing a concert in Russia, 
and I was on the International Space Station. And that was the first time that we did that. But in so many groups that we have, it, I, I think that what we're, what's important is to really try to change your perspective and be open and be brave. So I'd like to just talk for a couple minutes about perspective. So we have a great view up there on that space station. This is the space station, that's the Earth. We see things in a different way. I mean, here's our hurricane, which looks so beautiful, and yet we know that underneath, everyone's lives are now changed and different. We see cities at night, whole countries. There's Italy, indeed, shaped like a boot. And someplace closer to home, Cape Cod. I, when I first went to space, I went with another person from Massachusetts, and we got to see Massachusetts for the first time together. And we looked down, and he said, oh my gosh, it looks just like the map. <laughs> But it's wonderful to see these places in different kinds of light. And, uh, and it's, it's just like any sunset down here, or sunrise, or just a day when there's dark clouds and blue sky. I mean, every day is different. Every hour is different. We go around that Earth every hour and a half, and, and we have an amazing and amazing, beautiful perspective. So whenever I see something like this, I think that I must be like up, looking out. I mean, I was in space. It's way up there, right? But that's our windows that we take our pictures out of. And let's go back to this picture for a minute. That's the space station. There's the Earth. Where does that window have to be in order to take those pictures? We are down. So up, down, and, and does it matter? No, but it's an interesting change in perspective for your head. And, and here's the, another example that I'd like you to think about is when you look at this picture, do you see me? I think if you kind of turn your head a little bit like this, then you see, oh, it must be the person with all the hair, because no one else on the crew was like that, right? But now, in this picture, I think it's really clear where I am, and it's because I am where you are used to looking. So in order to see things differently, we have to teach ourselves to constantly be striving to look differently. And when we do that, we achieve a crew that is in lockstep. This is our crew up on that space station on that 50th anniversary of Yuri Gagarin's launch. And one of the ways we do that, you know, it's not just through the work that we do together, but it's, it's also family, and families are our teams as well. But finding out that this is something that really binds us together is that as the six people who have left the planet and left everyone behind, we share that. And in, in a way that we're probably not all used to sharing with each other. When, when my husband sent me this picture of our son standing on the same little spot that his mother had just been standing on to salute and launch off into space, I, I cried. I mean, it, it, it's, it's, it's an incredibly moving picture to me. And yet all of us actually had feelings about our families down there on the earth. And it's the kind of thing that really completes that whole circle that I've been, that I've been sharing with you, is that you know, there's the mission that is so very important. There is having to really, really look at each other and see each other, and, and also be brave about what you have to share, who you are, e even if the people that you're trying to share that with, you think they don't know how to see you. You might have to, it may not be fair, but you may have to show yourself be brave and show yourself, because we, we have a lot of serious problems down here on our, pro on our planet to solve. So we, we do. We have a lot of serious problems to solve together. And as a crew of six on a space station, we have the luxury of knowing that we're only six, and that if one of us doesn't get the job done or we don't do the job together, it's not going to get done, and the mission is paramount. But when I'm up there and I'm looking down, I see something different. I look down here on the earth and I see people who are working together to solve these problems that are beyond any individual person or any individual group. And so I look down and I see that we are the crew of Spaceship Earth. Thank you very much. Thank you.